Hello everybody and welcome back here to the Heroes Launch Epica. We just had both quarterfinals from Launch 1 here with Aveda. Now he's switching up. It's no longer Aveda, it's now Shadow Rider. I'm sorry for not changing that yet. Give me a second. But yeah, we have Shadow Rider joining me now for the next series. What do we know about those two teams? Right, so hello from me. Like you said, my name is Shadow. I'll be joining you for the semifinals and the finals. Now we're looking at we are looking at Encore going up against what I want to say is our favorites overall for the whole cup. Johnny Sin's uh, Butt Buddies, which is always a bit of a mouthful to pronounce. So I think we'll just shorten that to Johnny Sin's or at least I will. Um, so both of those teams, they are Division 4 teams. And respectively, they came 4th and 5th in their own divisions. Technically, Encore came 4th, so a spot ahead of Johnny Sin's. But overall, just looking at the performance of both teams uh, today, they've both been crushing. They are coming off of the quarterfinals, I want to say, stages. Yep, with G0 series. So both of them in their prime. Bit of a clash of a titans here, I guess. And as both teams are ready, we're just going to go over, hop shortly over the map drop. Go over here, Encore removing Fences of Eternity and Dragon Shire Johnson Spot, but is removing Sky Temple Towers of Doom and Encore deciding to make this map draft a super nice cross, picking in front of shrines, which is in the middle of it. Right, front of shrines, a very standard map. I'm not expecting any huge surprises. Are you, Samu? I don't expect anything too big as well from those two teams. When we take a look at the general bracket, at the other two teams as well. They're still hands up in, they might pick a diva, but we're gonna see this in <laughs> the next series. Just wanna tease a little bit there, but as far as I remember, Team Encore actually had a Samura player in their team. It's always quite interesting to see because this hero is really annoying. And if it's well played, he can even one win at one point. Yeah, Samura is one of those things that recently has turned into this um I don't even know the word in English for it, but it's like, it doesn't get picked too often, but when it does get picked, and if the person that's playing him is uh, really knows what they're doing, it can be like unstoppable. It's a force of nature almost. Now, looking at the bans, I'm not too surprised to see Akashia ban. That's a very standard meta pick. Vala, less so, I would say. I still like the Vala ban, mm. because Vala is lately coming in into the meta more and more. Meanwhile, we also have the Rega ban from the butt, but is they still don't like to play against Bloodhouse, even though it got nerfed. I personally believe it is not a go-to pick on Rega anymore. You can still go Ancestral every time, whenever you feel like mm -hmm. it. Right, so let's see what the answer here is from the blue team, Encore. Are they going to do a Respect ban, or is it going to be another meta one? It's an Orphia, so that kind of says respect ban to be. I don't know, is Orphia popular on Inferno Shrine specifically? We not only say, we not really say it specifically on Inferno Shrines, but we know why Tiger plays it a lot, and also on the other side, mm. from the side of Enko, we know that No Pro plays it a lot. But yeah, Jonathan's butt buddy is picking their early tech card, which is a very heavy preferred pick by Jenny Talia. We talked about it in the last series. His main supports are tech card and the Malfurion usually. Yeah, and the answer to that, of course, is the ever so popular Anna. Of course, um, she's one of the the hardest healers to play with, as you actually have to aim your heals very um, precisely. Now, Decker is probably close after her in terms of uh, being uh, hard to play because potions, you still kind of have to aim them. Of course, they, they do linger around, which Anna's heals do not, unfortunately. We also have with Anna with the Nano Boost coming in now. For I mean, mm. Sylvanas is not the best target for it, but it's a decent enough target. Ooh, Jonathan's butt butt is going on with Garrosh and Kalfos already. Kalfos, we talked about it earlier. Kind of strong on Inferno Shrines. You can just pop those mm. bombs onto those minions on the shrine, and people are like afraid of them and have to run away to not take too much free damage. And of course, Garrosh on the point. It's really scary because he cannot throw those shrine minions. He can only throw heroes. Yeah. There. <laughs> it's a thing a lot of people I, don't know. Yeah, I recently learned that as well myself. I was like, my my mind was blown. I always thought Garrosh in front of shrines, no go. Because, you know, around the objective, you get zero value out of his um, most important ability. 
But then I, I play Garrosh and Inferno Shrines myself, and uh, yeah, I discovered the uh, the fact for myself that you can only throw heroes, and it changed everything. Now, second banning phase over Lunara and Marthel. So so far, it looks to me like Encore have been really prioritizing ranged DPS in their banning phase, whereas um, the butt buddies. That's a, that's a very funny thing to say. <laughs> I've been going for more meta bans. But in the meantime, we see from Anchor a pick. We didn't see too much so far. It is the Blaze Ooh. for the soul. And it, I really like Blaze soul. And I played myself mm. a ton, a ton, a ton. And as you know, because you faced it already. But yeah, <laughs> Blaze is a really strong hero. And I love that we finally see him being picked up now as well in this Epic Cup. And he's getting paired up with the May, which is a very nice duel again, because May is best engager as a tank she has some nice aoe control and adding this up with a blaze who just throws down his slows goes in with the stun as well and having even a tool to help may sustaining through even more with the bunker is really really strong but then we mm. see it up going up against the lyric a matchup we talked about earlier it's really annoying for blaze early on because blaze just gets out damaged by the lyric brain and he has a really rough time dodging it but in the later stages his his, his bunker is just a really strong counter towards him too before level 20 before the silence comes in because then he cannot pop it anymore and white tiger a... white tiger going for his comfort pick again picking up the tracer hmm in the meantime it's a hammer that rounds the draft off for Enko. so no um huge nano beast tiger other than Sylvanas like we talked about which draft do you prefer just on paper samu i know both teams quite a bit i really like mm -hmm. The way that what the uh, turnings and spot buddies picked up the draft because they have quite a lot of comfort picks but in the end you know it is one thing a lot of people say about washed up you know hazu gets hammer it's game over because the german <laughs> was the panzer and now we have no pro who's another german with hammer <laughs> we got germans and panzers oh wow that's a that needs to be a skin for hammer honestly right i mean do we have a contest running I really love it. Yes, we have contest run. Exclamation mark, bet A, if you think Anchor will be able to get this game. Or exclamation mark, bet B, if you think Johnny but that is with White Tiger on the tracer, will be the ones winning it. But yeah, okay, it's straight into game number one. We're gonna start to the left side. Ebekaza, the main tank, the captain on the main. Opcap Bap. Up on the blaze, Bursty playing the heal, playing the savannas, Helicore on Anna, and last but not least, it's no pro on the hammer. Going up against in red on the opposite side of Inferno Shrines, we've got Johnny Sins Butt Buddies with Jenny Talia on Deckard, funny name that Galando on Garrosh, White Tiger on Tracer, thank god for easy names to pronounce, Raven Spike picking up that Keotas and Hodo on Lyric, I want to say. I Hodo. think that's how you're supposed to... Hodo, yeah, that's how we pronounce that one. Looking at okay, one so talent. Yeah, looking at those level one talents, it's a very scroll, large identify. amount of quests. See the scroll, mm, of scroll identify, which yeah. is very interesting, because usually you see the spell power, which adds up for Ruby, giving it even more value when you get 20% spell power for those Ruby potions, which heal up more than or the uh, sapphire which helps up engaging a lot in the meantime we see a 2v2 top lane <laughs> which is honestly a <laughs> thing i love to see because it's the first time we see really something changing up a little bit the four men rotating in the meantime from both teams a lot you can see a lot of skirmishing in the top lane as we see a lot of damage on the nova as the bomb comes out from tracer tracer goes down but so does hammer and blaze is able to secure the kill onto the Lyric 2 for 1 in favor for Enko already starting strong. You have great stuff for the blue team, and of course, you get some value from Lyric's passive, but um, the blue team still gets the experience, which is what early kills matter. Um, oh, that was English right there for you. This is why early kills matter so much, is that extra little experience you can get. Now, the three men, I want to say three men rotation, yeah, it's become a four men rotation again, and. Johnny Sins looking to take a siege camp a bit extra early. They will get away with it by the looks of things. One thing we talked about earlier with Sylvanas is just trying to get those trade value in, going onto lane sometimes, just taking half of the wall. And now we have the hammer trying to do the same in the meantime, just being top lane a little bit, being annoying towards the <laughs> air again. 
trying to push in a little bit there because he's just able to stand up. Meanwhile, Trace in a lot of trouble. Range. Almost goes down. Nice repo there. Garrosh gets a throw on the main. The passive is popped. Can she walk out of there? Yeah, she has E available, but she spreads the bomb as a present to her own team. Nevertheless, she makes it out safely, safely for the time being. All right, the force is in, and there we go. We see the Ruby coming in from Jenny Salia on the Decker. You know, the interesting thing as well is the energy roll royal on the Kalfa, so he's more trying to get more stuns in instead of getting the increased range to make sure you stun on the long range as well. Blaze with the stun being locked on a little bit there, getting body blocked. Root coming in from the Decker, getting thrown out by Garrosh, and good by Blaze as he's picked, up, picked off down here in the bottom lane. Yep, kill count has been equalized by um, the butt buddies G to G and they're looking to take a siege camp and fair enough they can with Blaze off the table for the time being. Experience pass kind of in favor of the red team. Let's see if they can manage to keep it that way until level 7. Of course that will be quite important as the shrine on middle is spawning right now. One thing we just saw the red team doing is giving vision onto this fountain so it is the Castro camp will take down the fountain and this means you opponents won't be able to get here and tap the fountain which is very good for example for this shrine. The opponents have to go towards the top lane to tap the fountain which is a far further way. They have a rough yep. time backing off just healing themselves up with the fountain. And Nopra already set up on the foil shelling away at those um, shrine guardians racking up 15 of them so far. Now. Here comes the red team looking for an engage. Garrosh pops unstoppable, looks for that hammer, but she has unstoppable as well. Unfortunately for her, it finishes off early and Nopro goes down to the Keltas bomb and the Garrosh pressure. Meanwhile, Tracer in a lot of trouble. She manages to confirm the Ana kill and get away. Slinky, slinky Tracer. 3 for 1 trade so far as Kelp as plays goes down as well. Evercasana on the run on his way, but there's the. Oh! <laughs> Into the fray from Garrosh for KT to make sure he's able to secure the kill and it's 4 for 1, sorry, 4 for nothing, favor for Johnson Spots, and they're already starting off very strong with this very first, pro, uh, very first Punisher about to be picked off by them. Yep, it remains to be seen of course how much value they will manage to get with it, as of course the first Punisher doesn't do you too much and it's not a frozen one either, it's just a regular, what's that, Morta Punisher I want to say, it's already. Looking... Very interesting pickup by the way when we take a look at Talons. We see on the side of Blaze we see the incinerator incinerator gauntlets. So you get the bonus damage against those shrine minions in and against minion waves and camps. They have a very strong murk clear, but you miss out on the bigger oil and the cooner use on the oil. Tracer meanwhile taking down the mountain in the bottom lane. Pretty annoying. And I Anna am. Going for the creative range on level 7, so increasing a basic attack range instead of opting into the hovering around. Meanwhile, on mid it's a 4v4 situation, level 10, crawling ever closer for the bird bodies, but not quite there yet. Ruby getting a lot of value, Blaze gets thrown in, can he get out? Doesn't look like it, the Punisher jumps in at precisely the right time, or the wrong time if you are Blaze actually, but Garrosh falls down to the fort so so far one for one trade the punisher is going to go down i think the fort will survive and may likely to get out of there as well some nice healing from mana in the back line nope i stand corrected the fort has gone down fort can take down in the end by the punisher and a little bit of tracer around tracer attacks coming in and looking forward towards the bottom and trying to get more value on the other side of the map and with the uh, person present staff on the map right now they already decide to go for the bottom seat can try to get this value and make, take a little bit more down off this wall at the next and it is possibly in the bottom lane we don't know yet it could also be in the top lane hmm in the bottom lane would heavily favor the butt buddies as they already took down the mid forward and the bottom fountain from hey, yep if it does if it does spawn at bottom they will be quite happy and of course they've been controlling a lot of those siege camps since the beginning of the game so overall they have dominating the bottom part of the map in the meantime, Tracer looking for, mm, what is she looking for? In the meantime, we see level seven coming in for the but uh, sorry, level ten coming in for the butt buddies. We're gonna see the stale one listen from Decker. A lot of challenge, of course, from Garrosh. No, this is going around here. This is changing, changing it up a little bit, going this time for the sticky bomb, preferring to have the slow in the bigger area, so you force your opponent mm. into the fight compared to the post rounds we saw in the other game, where she tries to get more bombs in for more sustain 
And that's very nice. I think they're getting out of any danger. Calcos again, like in the last game we saw on the front shrines, going into the Phoenix, trying to get this point control around the shrine. And Larig, of course, with the tomb, we don't march around here. Yep. Going up against that Nano Beast we talked about. Probably fought the Sylvanas uh, with Wailing Arrow. No big surprises there. Bunker drop. We talked about that as well, providing extra survivability for May. That's no surprise. And of, of course, I think May's Avalanche is technically banned in Heroes Lounge, isn't it? Yes, it is. Right, so again, no big surprise there on the Ice Wall. Already seen chat. I want to see Ancient Blessings this time. Eckhart's, oh, that Eckhart's would... Ancient Blessing is like an ultimate, so mm. I definitely see that one as well. Galanda not coming yeah. in for no pro. There's a nice knockback from him. Could have used in the middle wall to try and get the kill. Would it have been worth, I guess. You don't always think about this as a garage. But AoE heal potions. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, have a little way for uh, 13 for, for red team Johnson's butt buddy. To get close to level 13 and then go for the objective with the level 13 advantage. Tracer, in the meantime, pushing the bottom a little bit. I think those experiences, yep. there we see level 13 coming in for them. So, talent here advantage once more, and especially well time with the objective on the top lane. Now, sadly, for the butt buddies, it, it wasn't bottom. But they shouldn't have too much trouble controlling it on top, given that they're a talent here ahead. And Ancient Blessings indeed has been locked in. A really great talent. That's a lot of... Uh, I think it's technically magical damage to your basic attacks, so... Yes. Yeah, you can't underestimate it. Also heals each hero hits. So you could, on a trace of like some deals, sometimes you get a few of those procs in, because those, this procs only once a second. Mm. So it tries to get plenty of the moon. Then we see Splicing <laughs> coming in. Phoenix as well. Sleep from Decker being interrupted. Ice block from May, but she still goes down. Now we see the Entomb onto two, but there she's able to go out with Benji Wave. And in the end, a yeah. one for nothing great in favor for the Bad Buddies. A lot of resources expended by both teams. Does he get thrown in? Can he walk out? It doesn't look like it. He falls down in a no pro. I think he's going to follow. Indeed, Blaze should be able to get out of there with the help of Anna. But staggered death timers know what you're looking for right now if you're in court. This should mean that but buddies will have no trouble both getting control of that top shrine and soaking the rest of the map at the same time. Tracer immediately moving for the enemy siege camp. I think Blaze might have an idea that's going, no, he's, he's going back top. Even if he would contest it, it would be very scary because Tracer is still not easy for Blaze to kill. No. And yeah. But so small blessings, level 13, coming for Encore to even the playing field. The, protector, uh, the Punisher in the top lane will be an arcane one, so you have to be very careful with heroes. Yep, you stand in the center of those lasers and suddenly half of your HP is gone and you are sad. Spelled S-A-D-D. -D. Meanwhile, Chase is still on bottom, soaking, Blaze countering first, which means 4 versus 4 on the top lane for the time being. Let's see if the Punisher is going to get baited by May. He sh should get so, yeah. There he goes, jumps over the wall in a easy position to clear. But meanwhile, no pro gets thrown by Blaze. Just presses here and walks out there garage in a lot of trouble sylvanas manages to confirm the kill the punisher is dead and this looks like is working out for enko so far their enemies still don't have 16 and enko are happy to chase at least for the time being just want to say a lot of people think may is really weak in launch because of avalanche's band here we saw a perfect example mm. for ice wall being a very useful the ice wall onto three targets making sure that no pro on the helmet is just able to throw on the boost and just speed his his way out of any danger it's staying alive in the end. Uh, yep, and talking about speeding out of danger, Tracer needs to start speeding the hell out of Dodge. Yep, out she goes just before Enko complete the rotation, but Enko should be able to take that siege camp on the bottom. His garage is just now respawning, and he will have a hard time joining his team in time despite... So despite that, both buddies have a talent here advantage right now, they don't want to fight for another few seconds. Also, when we look at talents, this game, compared to the last game of White Tiger on this map, oh wait, we have an tomb onto Eva. He's 
able to ice out of it on his May, but he's still getting chased down. This video is coming in, slowing him down, getting the arm on him as well. But anyway, one thing we see this game, and every scale is getting out from the looks of it. Yes, yes. Nice leap there also on the there's also one thing we see here for the first time. It's Ebus Lyric. It's no longer the auto section and again coming <laughs> in from him. I love it. But yeah, one we look at Tracer Talents compared to the last game, we see time on level 7 the jump point instead of the untouchable because he's having a rough time. Getting those kills in and he's a little bit more have to be a little bit more worried about the hammer. Something very scary for him. And That's a very brave invade by Bot Buddies here on the top Bruiser camp. Enko very close to 16. If they manage to find a kill isolated, they will get to that same talent here advantage. And then it's a free Rio estate for them. The camp has been stolen though. Bot Buddies risk pays off. I always love the way that people ask why Avalanche is banned and Yosh is just replying with you can yeet peeps out of the map. Which is <laughs> true, and you can also stun them inside of the Hall of Storm. So inside here. Which should not be able to happen. Yeah, but what is really starting to use the advantage right now. Also, we see on Trace on level 6 in this time, the Ritual Cat, so a little bit more area damage compared to the heavy hand that we saw in the last game, which is 15 minus armor onto the target you hit with melee. Which gives you a lot of burst potential with the level 20. I'll get stuffed. Yeah, yeah level 16 now in for the Anchor. In the meantime, another team fight about to go down level 16 in for both teams. The Entomb goes down, no pro stuck between uh, Ice people. That was really funny. That looked like an Antarctica scene right there. Um, Garrosh in a lot of trouble. The stairwell list and listen hits three people, but they are walking up. And I think this is going to be a... Okay, I stand proven wrong. Once again, trade for two for two. That looked like it was going really well for both buddies, but... Even though they're coming in one kill ahead, maybe make that just blaze is going to fall down as well. Okay, right. So in the end of the day, bot buddies get the better end of that team fight. They've already opened up the bottom lane by getting that fort just before their enemies hit 16. And they might stand to get a free punisher. Yeah, I mean, not only the punisher, they're currently looking at Ooh. the top lane and look at the keep up here. Yeah, I mean... Fair enough, that keep is really exposed, especially with two catapults shelling away. I think they might get it. Yeah, they're going to get it. Phoenix gets used just to confirm it. Raven Spike saying, I'm not taking any chances. That keep is going down. And indeed, down it goes. In the meantime, Ted mentioning there was a very interesting build we have coming in from Sylvanas. Because usually when you go to festering your wounds, you often see the, um, the wind runner on level. 13, get the double E in, E in, Q, Q, E again, Q again, get a lot of burst damage in on one side, but this time we see Remorseless, so trying to get a little bit more AoE damage in, with life train together, fetching wounds just applies those three Benjikers stacks, and then with Remorseless you get those bonus, uh, bonus Benjikers, this bonus bonus yeah. fire which heals you as well with life train, this will probably be the but buddies are playing very passively. They recognize they did not have 20 quite yet. I would say they're happy to give that Punisher away even if it means they can get a 5 with 20. However, they seem to be proving me wrong. They have engaged into the enemy's there. Wow, and listen, really ineffective. Unlike I saw massive dawn from Garrosh. The Entomb is about to go down, but that doesn't matter. Hammer is already dead. Garrosh running away with not a lot of HP. Main falls down as well. And but buddies, they have done it even without 20. They have won the 5v5. Now they have 20. They can chase Tracer. Nothing can stop her right now. She can just dash after you and dash after you. And even if Lorik somehow manages to go down, picked up by the blue team, that wouldn't have been a problem. But of course, he's going is passive. But no, it's a five-man wipe. And but buddies are marching on towards the core. Blue team's core is under attack. Wow. Uh, five-man team wipe coming in. From the butt buddies, is they are able to and are going to go on the core after taking on the top keep before, and this is GG at game number one in this best yep. series goes over towards the butt buddies. Whew, what a game that was! I think that was closer than it looks um, on paper. We had one during the game when it could have went really either way, but buddies coming on top in the end, however.
Tracer, but is looking really strong. We see again the White Tiger with the Tracer comfortably really being very annoying and not even Hammer was able to do too much against it as soon as he got his levels in and get the talents in. And then he's really starting to be annoying on Tracer. And also one thing I kind of missed on the side of Encore compared to usual games against Tracer is really some sort of point and click CC. We mainly mm. have the Wailing Arrow to try and somehow CC down the Tracer. The silence is not not enough to get the yeah. to her. She, she was able to dodge a lot of things because there was nothing. Yeah, really managing being to hit, being 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 really a threat to her. Yeah, hitting tracer with wailing arrow is really hard. Not only is wailing arrow traveling quite fast, and it's one of the harder um, crowd controls to hit, but also of course tracer, a fast hero in her own right, and she does blink around way too often to make that a secure thing. So moving forward, what do you think, Samu? What do you think um in change up in order to beat Bud Buddies who seemed quite dominant in especially in the later stages of the game? It's a really tough question to ask. Because mm. I, I personally believe that the that Encore has to try and a little bit more ban out for picks. As we just saw the Tracer. I felt like Tracer just won we nine them in <laughs> one way. Because Tracer was always on the other side of the map like this is a very interesting thing I saw in the butt buddies the butt buddies doing compared to other teams. Is that they split the thingy a lot. The, the tracer off instead of the Lyric. The tracer was often soaking the side lane compared instead of Lyric. Which is a very interesting thing because no one really can contest the tracer there. Because if Blaze just walks up, she will just outtrade him hard and he won't be able to do too much against it. Yeah, and a quick word on maps, we've got Praxis called out, picked out as our next battleground, which is significantly different than what we saw in Inferno, on Inferno Shrines. Obviously, a two-lane map. The objective functions in a very different way, so I would expect both teams to approach the draft in a significantly different way. Like you said, some would expect Encore to ban out more of those um, comfortable picks that but buddies have, such as Tracer. As like you said, that yeah, that tracer was problematic. It didn't feel like Encore had ways to deal with her, not really. One thing I'm looking at Praxis Holdout is always how do the teams play this map? Because on the one side, it could be possible that the team Encore, for example, is just playing it for example the Junkrat or a Chromie in the bottom lane and something along the lines of a place in the top. So you just have those safe anchors which just take the lane and the opponent can really push in hard. And then you have the Freeman, which is pushing around and trying to gank people, kill people, get pickoffs, and do camps a lot. Which is the mm. usual approach, I would say, on this map. But yeah, you can also go with the more, I would call it this more Storm League way. Where you just have <laughs> the top laner in the top side and four people bottom brawl 24 7 yeah. all the time. And I think one thing, yeah. this is very hard, depends on your soul laner. Because if you have the better soul laner, can easily do that do that one of four because then your soul and will realize when the opponents are missing and he falls back and especially when you call it to him he will fall back he does not go down to those kills i think in this reasoning i want to take a short look at the player stats and we take a one short look on opik Op kebab who played the lace in the last game for team Enko, but we see it always apparently not really the offline itself it's more of a flex role because they, i believe they are flexing <laughs> around a little bit you see the top hero pick is the Mal mephisto followed up by tazda and on the first spot it is the zamura the zamura is going to be really annoying depending on if anchor decides to go into it early or if but they even decide to ban it out which because it can be really really annoying because it's a tough time beating Samura. he does never have to carve really because you can just even do the swap trick <laughs> <laughs> he's just extremely start strong in in the one one Right. So, like you said, in Braxis Holdout, quite possible to see that um, Storm League tendency of just big form and bros on bottom and almost no regard um, to the camps. God knows that's been the case in my Storm League games all the time. Every time we get Braxis with no um, exclusion. Is that the right word? I think it is. Anyways, we are going to draft on Braxis Holdout. Bedding is set up again. Exclamation mark. 
bet A in the number of points you want to bet on Encore if you believe they have what it takes to come back into this series and maybe come even in with a reverse sweep. I'm gonna see that in the possible third game if that's the case. Or if they mark bet B if you think Johnny's in spot by this, this and will close out the series in a clean 2-0. Okay, so first bounce. This is going to tell us a lot of whether Encore are changing their approach or if they're sticking with the last game's approach. It's a garage pound, so they are some changes which I really approve of Encore. I think they need to make some changes to the way they approach draft in order to come ahead in the second game. Now the garage pan. I like it, like I said. Um it's just so easy to miss position against garage, get thrown in into the enemy team, and then it's it's a kill, and this can really snowball quickly out of your control. So Getting rid of him, always safe. And Cassia, of course, a meta ban. We saw that last game from the Buff Buddies. If you if it worked for you once, there's no need to change it. One one thing you always have to be careful with Garage is there's a very strong Giga Broken combo around with Zarya mm. with the speed barrel level four, which gives Garage four percent movement speed, so he's even faster <laughs> than the mount. He just he uh, just speeds into your team, yeah. picks them up for an in the back line, <laughs> throws him into his own team, and you're like, All right, okay. nothing we could do. And as soon as he tries to see him in any way or form, he just presses in the middle and doesn't care. This is one thing you he have to be very care. careful. And Zara is really strong on this map, so you all have to keep that in mind. So, I like this band very much. Turns in spot base, this time banning out the decker themselves, which is usually a comfort pick for them, which is quite interesting. And then we see Encore banning out the Orph, which is unassemble against White Tiger. But on the other side, they also have No Pro, who enjoys to play a lot, a lot, a lot of Orph himself as well. Yeah, and we see Imperius as the first pick a choice here for Encore. Now, of course, it could be solo lane Imperius. It could also be a tank Imperius, which I want to say is less likely. Um, I wouldn't even say so. But... No, I personally know Ebbe a little bit, so I can bet on him also playing Imperius as a main tank. <laughs> No, <laughs> okay. Johnson's Counter spot is countering it with the double blonde guys coming in with Kel for the Dando and two blonde handsome boys. <laughs> Both of them green eyed, I think. No, Keltas is green eyed. I think Andrew is blue eyed. More conventional beauty standard right there. Uh, do you know what's surprising to me, Samuel? We haven't seen much of Joanna yet, and she's been making it through the banning phase quite consistently, I want to say. It's not only Johanna. One thing on Brax is hold us. Talking about her. Talking about her. She's coming in, Johanna. There she goes. But she's paired up with the Mofurin. A very strong combo again. Johanna pulling people together. Mofurin able to root them. Also with Johanna, you have a little bit of a wave coming in. You still need it too much on Brex's holder. But it's still a nice thing to have for the case of your opponent getting a third wave. But one thing I wanted to mention, I kind of missed so far in this draft, is Rex. I Josh pointed out in the chat. Hmm. As I don't know. I feel like Rex is really missing here so far. He's good against Imperius, so I don't know. Pretty good Rex could... is good against Imperius. <laughs> yeah, he could get banned. I mean, if you're in call right now, um, the enemies have already picked up their mage. Uh, I guess they could ban a tank, but the tank pool is so big and wide open right now that I don't feel like it benefits in call to ban a tank as much as it does for them to ban a solo laner. We'll see what they decide to go with. And it, 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 it is the mouth elf. So a so lane up, but not quite Rexa. What do you make of that mouth elf ban? It's a quite interesting one because mouth elf is okay -ish into Imperius if he manages to dodge his Imperius cues. Which can be a difficult task, to be fair. Yeah. Especially because the Imperius Q hitbox is still very weird, at least for me. It seems like it. <laughs> so yeah, banning it out is just making it safe to do don't go up i mean i know hodo a little bit so he plays some awful as well but i kind of i don't know i'm not sure i, I kind of would love to see this duke of coming in this game but first of all we're gonna see Jones in spot buddies with the pickup of arthas and vala and so far arthas is picked by galanda so it looks like he's rather on the main tank position than the solo lane yeah by the looks of things oh wait it's a Rexa, so Imperius in the Foreman. Okay, that's that's you interesting, know, especially no mage. The thing, uh, the thing Encore did here is 
We don't gonna tell you who is solo lane because we can. We have Rex who could solo, we have Imperius who could solo, we have Phoenix who could solo lane. So guess who it will be? <laughs> Malfurion! <laughs> True. No, but it will probably be the Rexa in the solo lane, but for Rexa, yeah. I would kind of assume to see something being picked up or something along those lines, but. Oh, that's actually a very oh. spicy one with Hero being picked up. She's yeah. kind of good against Rexa. If she if you manage to close the gap, um obviously you can get onto the main body of Rexa, which is Rexa himself, not Misha. Um it, very interesting draft. I mean we're seeing triple bruiser, um, or rather double bruiser and a tank against triple DPS. I kinda I, I wanna say I'm favoring here and cause draft slightly more if they don't lose the objective. Now at the moment they lose the Zerg wave, it might be a bit hard for them to clear it. I mean, one thing I want to shortly mention, even though Eric said it in chat, yes, there's just neither the offlane nor the tank player, so we, we probably won't see Imperius in either of those spots. But you still have the possibility to switch around, and my own team does it like, quite a lot, because we love to play with stuff like Thrall 4-man, or Xul 4-man, or even Alpha 4-man. So we pick those heroes often on me, and then the 4-man guy who plays those heroes in the 4-man, then picks for me a roll or plays something on those <laughs> lines. The point is like, oh, wow, they swapped around. Never mind, it's maybe not uh, this guy on the solo lane. Okay, well, regardless, we're going to be heading into Brax's holdout. Oh, yes, crash. We have <laughs> on the left side, we've got Thirsty on Imperius, Halakor on Mothron, up Kebab on Rex, on Nofro on Phoenix, Ebekaza on Johanna, it is Encore, it on the right side, we see Jones in butt buddies, White Tiger on Vala, Hudeo on Kira, Trinity Leon, and Raven, Spike, Kalfos, and Galanda on the Arthur. Sam was just setting the record for the quickest introduction in the team, so I'll try to follow up this with the talents. We got Caltrops on Vala, interesting quest, along with the KT pickup on the um, Mana Addict, so no uh, shenanigans there with the stacks of the Q going up against a Q build Phoenix. So he's going to be filling that mage position kind of ish and I'm going to slow down right now because I'm running out of air. <laughs> and now we get to the top lane, we got Rex against Kira in the meantime as we have in the bottom of the 4v4 keeps on going. <laughs> Galanda dropping quite low, now picking up the globe for his and his team and in the meantime we see no pro testing. Playing the way, big two man spike on to Kelfos and Arthas but he has the root as well and Andrew pulling out the Kelfos making sure he is safe but Arthas goes down in the end. Yep, Galanda uh, dropping first for Butt Buddies and Enko starting this game off in a much stronger fashion than what we saw last game. Imperius really working out for them on the bottom lane. We'll see if that continues to be the case. Meanwhile, on top, Misha dies. Animal abuse is happening. In the one one up there in the top lane, I would kind of expect Rexa to Misha die a few times. Because if he just uses his E too often, he's going to get Ubum very fast and it's gonna have really big troubles against here stay alive because she can she sometimes gets a little bit of poke on him and which kills him in the long run <laughs> meanwhile on bottom and maintaining very importantly maintaining control of that bacon get it bacon is obs dead again no it's not <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have still down here both points so far being equally distributed over the teams. We have now the bottom, not the under, uh, sorry, top under control of the team as the bottom got we can by the red team. Yeah, Baba Casa forced to look for a fountain tap. Unfortunately, I think that's on cooldown right now for him slash her. And but buddy is able to maintain control of the bottom bacon for the time being. Of course, Arthas is going to get fucked out in a 4v1 situation. Anduin has packed off, he's got his man up, but in the meantime, the blue team have got 14% Zerg wave. It's not a lot, but it is a start. Oh, White Tiger falling very low there. Due to Phoenix Spoke and of course no pro is going to regen those shields very quickly. Pala is forced to tap. Pala still gets on by no pro a lot on the Phoenix. This is one of the things I personally really like on Phoenix. Which you see here, he's doing. He's just always going in there trading for most of mm. the shield and getting some nice damage in. Then folding back and getting his shield back up and then able to trade again. 
I'm talking about going in. Does she look for a spear there? Didn't Y manage to find a contact? Had to back off really quickly. Because of course, once you've committed with Imperius after you spear and you don't hit anyone, you really need to get the hell out of there. Meanwhile, White Tiger very low. Phoenix again forcing a trade and Vala coming off on the bad end of that trade. Of course, Phoenix regening those shoes like we talked about. Valander really can't afford to stay on that beacon for too long. But here in Root provides brilliant zoning. He is stuck. No man's landing. Um, Arthas, excuse me, goes down. Two kills for zero. Encore really starting strong. Yeah, one thing you're never allowed to forget is when we take a short look here that Misha died two times already. Rex in the mm. time top lane struggling a little bit. And we also see, by the way, when you look at the bills, the thing Aveda pointed out earlier today. When White Tiger plays Vala, he usually goes for the Cal Traps on one and then opting into the Q world to get a lot of burst damage in against the opponents. A bit of a hybrid build, huh? I, w I would call it a Q build on non macro maps more, because you just get them with, with cut ups, you get the core reduce onto the wall, so you get even more Qs in, which gives you more damage. Alright, that's actually quite smart. I've never thought about it like that. Meanwhile, Kalanda looking for a flank gets a nice W off, but the decision has been made not to follow up. White Tiger a bit out of position. Get some bulk on Dursi, but for the time being, he can't quite follow up. Some more Zerg percentages going over to the side of Enko. I think... Um, What's her name? Shakira. Kira, that's it. She is having a bit of trouble on that top lane, dealing with the Rexa. Some people used to call her Wakanda, but not Waka Waka Ea, eh? <laughs> Yeah, top lane now retaking by Kira, stopping an 88% for Encore. But yeah, in the meantime, we got a 1 for 100 in the bottom as Makuran gets picked off, but Dursty turning around, coming with the big boy spear onto Arthas, and a pick up there. I have Valor losing a lot of HP to no pro once again. Phoenix really coming through as a great trader, of course. Um. Combined together with a healthy frontline like um, Drana and Imperius, it really makes your life so much easier when you're not Imperius. 88% for Encore on the objective, really close to that 100 to 0 Zerg wave. I think they really want it. But on top, Rex are having a lot of trouble now, like a lot of trouble with Shakira. I think Bear's going to go down again, yep. No, bro, able to teleport out in the end. Still not oh, everything picked mm. up there as well. So is Misha and Topman. We'll see for the first time in this game both points under control of Donizin's but buddies. Yep, really touch for them to get some Zerg percentages before the enemies hit 100. As otherwise, that Zerg wave is going to be devastatingly overpowered for their enemies now. Top oh no. is going to go back over. Sha Shakira is in a lot of trouble. The, the root from Malfurion. Brilliant follow up on Dursi as well. Shakira dead on the floor. Level 10 is coming closer what? and closer for both teams. I was about to say this looks like a gang on the top lane and five people because five people just move <laughs> and right onto the point. That moment Hodo walks on the point against Phoenix and just gets picked off by them. Oh, but yeah, we see level 10 now coming in, no pro already going for the of his choice. He usually goes for a panic rack and we see it again coming in here early on. Angelic Armament picked up by Imperius Mofurin with Tranquility, unleash the boars from Alexa and Johanna with the plus shield, so no falling sword shenanigans coming in here. Yep, Galada tanking a lot of damage on top lane from the Zerg, of course, getting those banelings out of the way. So they blow up on you and no on your structures. If you can afford to do it, it's always great. Meanwhile, the Zerg on bottom has been cleared by Enko, so they have some time to retake top if they wanted to look for something there. Well, Joanna is rotating, that's for certain. Oh, it's a Misha starting out a little bit. There is no damage, however, on top lane. No, oh, wait a minute. There is Planet Cracker, but really an um, play from Jenny Tala with the Leap of Fate. Taken Raven Spike under the rainfall over there. Misha goes down once again. Rexa also in a lot of trouble. Shakira is staying on him. The ult comes through. It does connect. So two deaths on the side of Enko. What a disaster for the blue team. Phoenix, in the meantime, uh, tried to plan it and help in the top lane, but the Vala scouted him out and chose him. Well done by White Tiger there. 
So we're looking at an even game. Four kills against four kills. A level 11 versus level 11. Even in structures, the map looks fairly even. Imperius gets rooted. Follow up crowd control from Kiotas. I don't think Angelic Armament is going to be enough. Thirsty on 40 HP. Yep, he does fall to the key of Paladin. Uh, I think it was the third stack of it. Um, first, I know it bounces around. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> Johnny Sins invading enemy camps. And I think those are one of the first few camps we've seen taken this game. We're immediately capitalizing on their advantage with the kill on computers. They seeing the next camp right with them and taking it. Very good because this one pushes in the bottom. It's quite a lot. Now that four takes some serious damage. Yep, especially because the next Zerg wave for the butt buddies is going to be on bottom. It's a 4v4, uh, 4v4 bro for the time being. But Encore, they don't have a fort to follow back onto anymore. So if they get in a spicy situation where it doesn't look good, they don't have that safe retreat option. Isn't the next wave for butt buddies in the top? I think. Yeah, yeah you is. are correct. Okay, okay, my bad. Happens. Happens. I thought it goes like, doesn't it rotate like every time it switches yes, around? It or is it what? the same with Battlefield of Immortality? No, it's, it's, it's popping around. Bala gets in the meantime picked off, and Toto on the Kira taking a lot of damage. There's the Light Bomb coming in, trying to make the Galanda move out of there. But it's an art plus, he has no mobility. There's the Spear from Imperius. Taking a ton of them, please. Making it out in the end. As Jenny tell you, on then is able to heal a lot. Yeah, you know what? He might not have a lot of mobility. He certainly does have a lot of sustain, especially paired with a skillful Anduin there to back him up. Now, level 13 already in for Encore. They are establishing dominance over the beacons. Right now, Afro in the top lane are trying to go on the. Rexa again, there we go with the spin to win. Some yeah, he finds that damage onto Rexa, but the stun from Misha is good. I think Shakira needs to start thinking about retreat. Meantime, within the bottom lane, a fight going on, and Janice versus Wolf Galana taking a lot of damage. So, there's no pro, the bomb is getting spread too thirsty on his Imperius. No, no pro hitting the plus one. <laughs> Kira makes it out in the end. We see also everyone else except for Janice, which said earlier on, making it out from Encore, but. It also meant they took a lot of time off the butt buddies and they did not manage to get on the shrine on the beacons and we just saw things being picked up in the bottom of the beacon as well. Under the yep, zero percent no. circle wave now coming in in the bottom in favor for Anchor. They should be able to get that forward with it, but of course they can't quite afford to push with it as no pro got picked off unfortunately for them. So other than that well well that format not even go down it survives well i'll be damned we're staying alive with a lot of people coming in from the side of kelton and kira as we saw vala going top lane staying safe a little bit there in the bushes waiting the strength to pick up as many experience as safely possible seems like another battle is brewing potentially over the top right siege camp onko bling the aggressor looking for that uh, steel mission, providing a good amount of zoning and visibility there. The Mofirian roots are also in front of that choke point. Imperius popping his out off, however, seeming a bit indecisive. He goes in with the key. The light bomb is there to counter engage. He gets stunned. Eric Asa already having to run away. He spreads the bomb onto the back line, but he survives for a thirsty. Might not be so fortunate. Brilliant Mofirian root coupled together with a um, quick spear from thirsty. Might mean he gets away. No, he doesn't. Vara is there to confirm the kill. No problem, might be a little bit of trouble, but no, he gets those auto attacks in onto the Arthur, so he gets his movement speed. But now Hodo on the Kira again, back onto him, there's a spin to win, stun from Kel first, and he goes out, and now we also see Rex in a lot of trouble. As Arthur has made his way into his face, now, ooh, big stun there from the Kel first, and the bomb in the end is enough to secure the kill onto the Rexa. Yep, three kills going over in favor to the butt buddies and of course they're immediately looking at that boss. It doesn't matter that Galand is low, it doesn't matter that Kira is not soaking top, they've got a camp pushing there and that boss is going to be picked up with minimum effort from them. They're all recalling, very nice um, synergy there and um, team coordination to recall at the same time. 
as now they're all going to be topped off and able to roam the map quite threateningly. Why do Phoenix just pick this level 1 to the I see again the people yesterday already complained about it a little bit. And I personally say I kind of like it a little bit because in the ways it's give it's the only talent which gives you actively PP damage and also gives you more toxicity with the another spin around thing. Mm. The teleport build Phoenix goes with both warfare. It is really hard to get the big value out of the other two talents. Because it's you have such a big attack speed with the level 7 talent as soon as you teleport somewhere. You really struggle to get it procked every time, so Yes, technically seen mobile offense is better damage wise in team fight, but on the other side, the advanced targeting gives you also at least a little bit of PvP damage and a lot of PV value in general. Yep. Encore really struggling in that PvE department without a mage, so Phoenix was probably forced into that Q talent to um, compensate for that. It looks like this could be a 4v4 on top as Vala is stuck chasing Misha for the time being. Kira goes in, Phoenix in a lot of trouble, he can't make it out, the life bomb confirms the kill, he goes down and it seems like Bud Buddies are going to be chasing their opponents back to their base. Meanwhile, Vala almost killing Rexa in a one-for-one -one trade for Misha already. Shakira gets rooted, Leap of Fate is there to save her. Okay, so only Phoenix dies. In the meantime, the chat talking about Sala saving with Wade. We have another engage onto Joanna. She's getting pushed in by Kira, getting some back out when she goes down. But in the end, we see the return kill. Imperius is able to go in and hit his Q on to the R. Which kind of works out better for Encore, of course, because that both time for Phoenix to respawn. So they might get a chance to contest one of the objective points to prevent a 100 to 0 zerg wave as they haven't had to deal with a 100% zerg wave in this game yet and i'm really worried about them as they lack in that pv department like we talked about earlier it seems like it is going to be 100% zerg wave for the red team pushing on the bottom lane and that keep there already very low so there is a serious threat to the blue core yeah it could also already be a game in 2-0 for johnny's in but but it's if anchor fucks up a little bit here. Yeah, and, and oh, recognizing there we that, go Rexa with the laser. joining Steam Dasta. <laughs> there we go with the laser, down to 36% already. Yeah, I want to figure out why you pick it. Because it's just very strong at clearing up the Zerg wave. Yeah, no pro, just saying no to the Zerg. Very respectable, I want to say. The keep might still fall down, Kjotas no focusing it for the time being, but the remainder of the Zerg will do that job for him. Meanwhile, however, what few blue Zerg units were there on top might actually get a fall, which would be the first structure Encore managed to secure in the game. Uh, not for the time being yet, though, however. Not for the time being. Well, what do you do if you're Encore right now? In Encore, you kind of want to take them both forth right now, just to make sure you get those passive experience in. But you also have to force the fight to somehow get the man advantage back, and this is currently trying to do as Galanda is about to get picked off. The flesh shield misses, but the deep of faith was also used there because they're not trying to run out. He's getting stunned. Light bomb coming in as well, and good by Johanna. So Johanna getting picked off even is really hard, and now no pro in a lot of trouble. This white tag is looking for him, getting the stun, getting another stun, but he's dropping very low himself. Photo missing his E, and this should be the hero. Oh, wait a minute. Does Misha have leave? Yep, she does. There goes Kira down. So currently 4v4 situation for um, both teams. Vala goes down. Wow. Trade for Phoenix. So 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, I want to say that favored Encore there as they're behind in experience. So anytime you can trade heroes in that kind of a situation, you should get more than your opponents. And of course, Janna did die significantly earlier in the fight. So she's going to be back significantly earlier as well. So... There'll be a short window of opportunity for Encore to look for a 4v3 fight, which is ideally what they want. We see already Siege Camp being picked up now by Johnson's Puppet because they know that their opponents have to defend the waves. In the bottom, we now see Bruiser and the Siege Camp running in from that of Johnson's Puppet and also on the top lane still there one Siege Camp and the Bruiser Camp is about to be sent by them as well. It's really going to be a big struggle. 
And for Calypso, did Phoenix pick only for wave clearing? No, he did not. I don't know for a little bit, and I know that he loves playing the Cracker whenever possible. Or was it way more compared to the Salvo? They are already now in already for the Butt Bardis and Encore. They are a bit more than half a level away from it. We really yep. have to look for something soon. Somehow. Mm, very hard position for Encore right now. They are really stuck with only bad choices. What can they do realistically? They can go look to the Lady Objective and take a fight without 20. Not ideal. They could just sit back in base and wait uh, for their um for the experience pass to even out. Also not ideal. The opponents get 100% Zerg Wave. It looks like they're going to go for a compromise. Worst case scenario, both 100% Zerg Wave for their opponents. And a 5 without 20. And it's not really working out for them. Misha's already fallen down. I think they could have just stayed back. Now only losing Misha is kind of okay for them. But they mm. lose everything except for Planet Cracker. But in them, Planet Cracker is the Ooh. most necessary thing for them. Because they have to clear the wave from it. But now we have the butt buddy going for the boss. So either yep. the Zerg wave will end or this fight will somehow anchor back in this game. Galanda very low. I think Joanna doesn't have iron skin. However, Imperius dies in a trade for Kira. But Joanna is also down. This looks like it's going to be boss going over to the red team. Unless Phoenix get the biggest amount of value ever. Which he might just do. So Raven Spike goes down. Bala said no Phoenix stay on the point there you go oh my god he lost the boss no pro oh he has regrets I can tell you right now he has many regrets Lo they lost the boss I believe this is game now as the Zergwolf is pushing on the core we just saw the laser being used to try and clear some of them but I guess this is core the one from the butt bus is down and on the side of Encore is only Phoenix alive and he won't be able to defend this Especially as the boss no, is coming in now as well, that is <laughs> GG as the butt buddy manage to get this game number two on their side as well. What a game. Oh. Phew. That ending though, that ending, that deserves See, a clip. If this fight is a little bit faster and they get the boss, he has not that much of a stress to clear the wave. Yeah. But, but just losing the boss in this moment, I mean, I think even if they won the boss, this sort of would have ended, but just losing the boss made it 100% sure that this one yeah. this would be over. But it we was... have our next series coming up soon, shortly, let's say it this way. And when we go over to the bracket again. Yep, taking a quick look at that, it's Team Super... How do you read that? Kulakas? Kulaks? Kulaks. Kulaks. The team Super Kulax versus Hands Up. Again, both of those teams coming up from very dominating series in the quarterfinals. G0 for both of them. I mean, and we know if them goes up against the butt bodies. Do you check if any one of them played the butt bodies yet? Yeah? 